story of how my college Tinder date ended up being my actual stalker. A couple of months into me starting college, I started looking around at online dating apps. I was pretty picky in the types of guys that I would talk to, not with their looks or anything. I was just looking for somebody a little bit more serious about a relationship than most people were on those apps. Keeping that in mind, there was a couple of guys that I didn't really keep conversation with if I saw it going nowhere from the start. And one of those guys is who became my stalker. About halfway through my first semester in college, I noticed that same guy was sitting outside my class every single time I got out of it. I always just assumed that he had the class in that classroom after mine, or that that was a convenient place for him to sit and study. I don't know. I didn't really think much of it. Who would, right? After about two weeks of me noticing him sitting in the exact same spot, every single time I got out of class, he started trying to wink or smile at me. When we made eye contact, I thought he looked kind of familiar, and I figured it was probably from Tinder, so I went and looked through my conversations, and that's where I found that I had left him on red. I decided to go ahead and text him on Tinder and just ask him if that was him sitting outside my classroom and how his life was going. He responded and told me yes, that was him, and he was wondering when I would figure it out. He ended up asking for my phone number, and I figured since I was seeing him around campus a lot, there's no point in not giving it to him, so I went ahead and gave him my phone number. He texted me pretty much all of the time, and even though he did seem serious about a relationship, I just really wasn't feeling it. I let him know pretty early into us texting that I was not looking for a relationship with him. He agreed and said that he wasn't very interested in me either, but he did think I'd make a really cool friend. After that, I started responding to him less and less just to kind of get him off my back. I was still a little creeped out that I saw him outside my class every day because he never exactly gave me a reason as to why. And if the reason was he had a class there, why didn't he just say that? A couple of days later, I was at the school gym with my friends and I heard over the loudspeaker something that literally sent chills down my spine. They said his name over the intercom and notified everyone that if they saw this man to report him to the front desk because he wasn't allowed in there. And I think it's safe to assume that if you get kicked out somewhere, you know that you got kicked out. You shouldn't be coming back unless you have a reason. My friends and I had posted on my Snapchat story that we were going to be at the gym that day. I told my friends how scared I was that this man I saw on Tinder started sitting outside my classroom every day and now showed up at the gym. So we decided to put it to the test. I did not go anywhere by myself at all on campus for about two weeks. And every time me and my friends went somewhere, we would post it on my Snapchat story. Sure enough, this man showed up every single time without fail. Starbucks, the cafeteria, the literal bathrooms in a certain building. I was terrified but literally blocked him on everything. Except that I forgot that he had followed me on TikTok and before making this video, I went ahead and checked and he's still following me. So if you see this, please stop. This is the story of the time my client got completely drunk on set of a photo shoot. This story takes place back when I used to do boudoir shoots. I would meet the clients and the photographer in a hotel. I would set up my entire makeup station in one room and they would be taking photos in the room next to us. For a lot of women, these types of photo shoots are just a little bit out of their comfort zone. And there were several clients who would choose to have just a little bit of liquid courage before stepping into the photo shoot room. For the sake of the story, let's just call this girl Mandy. As soon as Mandy arrived on set to get her makeup done, she had already told me that she was extremely nervous about this photo shoot. Mandy told me she was nervous for a couple of reasons, all of which I had heard before, so I started preparing her and doing the best I could to make her feel comfortable in the makeup room. Shortly after I started on her makeup, she asked me if there was any way she would be able to have some of the wine that was on the counter. I said, yep, absolutely, that stuff is there for you guys. She headed over and made herself a glass of wine, and then sat back down in my chair while I continued to do her makeup. Whenever I work on photo shoots like this, I usually give myself an hour to finish each client's makeup. Since they will also have an appointment time with the photographer, it's extremely important that I get my clients done on time. Because of the slight time crunch, I was so focused on making sure I finished her makeup on time that I hadn't even paid attention at all to how many times she had filled up her wine cup.
The last step in me finishing Mandy's makeup was doing her eyeliner and applying false lashes. As you know, this requires her to be pretty still. And even though I usually place my hand on top of their head to stabilize it, for some reason I just couldn't get her head to stay still. Let me remind you that I had already done her eyeshadow and the entire rest of her makeup, so I was really confused why all of a sudden she started acting totally different. I didn't want to risk ruining her makeup by messing up her eyeliner, so I asked her if she could just be a little more still and make sure she was holding her head up so I didn't have to support her entire weight. When she looked up at me, that's when I realized that she was totally wasted. She started slurring her words, telling me all sorts of TMI stories, one of which included her having to go to the ER to get a tampon removed when she was like 14. And when I finished her makeup, she legitimately fell out of my chair onto the hotel floor. I went and got the photographer from the other room and told her about Mandy's situation. Both of us advised Mandy not to do her shoot that day and we even offered to reschedule. But Mandy kept insisting that she got those pictures done because her wedding was just around the corner and she wanted to give them to her husband on her honeymoon. I went down to the lobby and asked if they had any crackers, bread, rolls, something. I took Mandy back up a small snack and as she was eating it, she literally just vomited all over the entire floor. Eventually, she made it to the bathroom and she threw up in there. And all of this was happening while I had another client on the way. Long story short, I guess don't drink alcohol before your photo shoot. <laughs> Am I the asshole for not letting a girl check my phone to make sure I wasn't taking pictures of her? I'm at the gym today and I'm walking towards an empty squat rack. Right in front of me is another girl doing squats. While walking up, I briefly noticed that her leggings are see-through and when she bends down in her squats, you can easily tell she's not wearing underwear. That's not my business, that's her choice, but it made me uncomfortable to take a rack that was kind of behind her. I had been waiting my entire gym session for one of these racks to open up and this was my last lift before leaving, so I went ahead and took it. I went through my workout as normal. After every set, I check my phone for 5 to 20 seconds. I track every single set for every single lift in a spreadsheet to know how much I lifted and for how many reps. Sometimes I need to remind myself what I did last week to make sure I'm progressing. Sometimes I'm checking the time or changing a song on Spotify. Tonight specifically, there was a very important basketball game being played, so I wanted to keep up with the score, so I used my phone a lot at the gym. I finished up my third set when the girl turns around, walks up to me with her phone up, yelling, What the F are you doing? Effing perv, stop taking pictures of me. I'm caught completely off guard, but I explained that I'm just taking notes on what I'm lifting and that I'm not paying attention to her at all. She's being extra loud so other people are looking at me, plus she's recording me, and she demands I go through my pics and videos to show her what I was recording and I delete the ones I took of her. I tried to again explain I didn't record anything of her at all. She's yelling that if I have nothing to hide, I should have no problem showing her, so I insist on going to the gym management. Once at the front, we both explain our stories. The normal gym attendee asked me if I'm willing to show her, a neutral third party, my phone. She also says if I have nothing to hide, it's not a big deal and we can squash it right now. I refuse. I have my own uncensored pics in there plus those of my girlfriend. I'm not going to let anyone force me to show them for some BS. I do show her my spreadsheet which shows it's been revised over 15 times in the past 50 minutes. So that proves what I was using my phone for. That was received well, but they still expected me to prove my innocence. I told them they needed to review the cameras. Apparently, only the manager has access to them, so I was told he'd call me before the end of the night. My girlfriend tells me I should have just let them go through my phone because she doesn't mind, and it would have cleared this all up. But I do mind. I get that someone wouldn't want someone taking pics of them, but violating my privacy to prove I wasn't taking pics of you crosses a line for me. Later that night, the manager called. He checked the footage. He couldn't see what was on my screen, but he said it looked like I had my phone pointed towards the ground right in front of me the whole time. In his opinion, it wasn't high enough to even take a picture of her and never angled it in her direction. Apparently, I was going to get banned from the gym if the cameras didn't absolve me. And also, I'm not the first person that has been accused before by this girl, but she legit had a creeper before, so I kind of understand where she was coming from.